Choosing the best CPU and motherboard combo for your gaming PC can be a tricky decision. It's such an important part of the process you do not want to get it wrong. But do you go Team Blue with Intel or Team Red with AMD? Do you need a chip that's overclockable? How much should you spend on the motherboard? And how do you make sure the processor is quick enough for the GPU you want to buy? Well, in this video, I'll be answering all of those questions and more, telling you which are definitively the best budget, mid-range and high-end CPU and motherboard combos, so you can get this important part of your build sorted once and for all. Let's do this eBuyer is your one-stop shop for great deals on technology and gaming hardware here in the UK. If you're looking to build a new PC this year or just supercharge your setup with a new monitor or some peripherals, head over to ebuyer.com and check out their wide range of great deals. What's more, they've also got some great deals on pre-built PCs from AlphaSync or some systems that are ready to ship. Check them out at the link in the description below. Let's start off with a little bit of background and talk about why the CPU and motherboard choices are so important. You need to make sure that A, you can feed enough data to your processor and B, that more importantly, it can handle the data you're looking to feed it. The CPU is arguably just as, if not more important than a graphics card. And that's because the GPU relies on the CPU for so much of the mathematical equation in games. If you buy a CPU that's not powerful enough, your GPU will sit at 70 or 80%, while your CPU is pinned at 100. And a maxed out CPU in many respects is worse than a maxed out GPU, as you're more likely to see lag in your system, stuttering, or even the dreaded blue screen of death. But the CPU is just half of the equation. Buying a motherboard that is A, compatible with the CPU, B, supports the rest of your hardware, and C, actually has the features you're looking for, is so important. Let's start off with compatibility. A motherboard will only be compatible with a certain range of CPUs. And I don't just mean you need an Intel motherboard for an Intel CPU. Oh no, you need an Intel 12th gen motherboard for an Intel 12th gen CPU. And for the AMD chips, you need an AM4 motherboard that's just a couple of years old, and that will work with practically all of the last few gens of Ryzen CPUs. We'll talk about compatibility later with a full compatibility guide, as this is one of the easiest things to check. Either your motherboard's gonna work or it's mm. not. What's arguably more important is that your motherboard's got enough RAM DIMM slots for all the memory you want to install. It's got room for your one or two graphics cards you're looking to add. Obviously, most people nowadays just pop the one in, but for serious creators, video editors, it's worth considering. You also need to make sure it's got enough room for any of the latest fast storage drives that you might need now or later especially if you look into future previous system, something we recently discussed. And finally, you also need to make sure you've got the right I.O. Are you looking for a particular number of USB 3 or USB C ports? Do you need Wi-Fi? Some of the boards come with it included and some simply don't. And that's not even discussing the new DDR5 memory standard, which works with some boards and doesn't with others because it physically requires a brand new slot. That's right, DDR5 RAM does not fit into a DDR4 motherboard. So with all of that background in place, you're probably thinking, James, I'm even more confused than I was and this sounds so complicated. So let's make it that little bit more simple. We're gonna start off with the budget chips now and work through to higher end motherboard and CPU combos as we go. Now for my preferred budget lineup in this build, I've gone for the Asus Prime B660M A D4, and this <laughs> going everywhere, this Intel Core i3-12100F. Intel's new 12th gen chips have been phenomenal, and the 12100F is their great entry-level i3. You might be wondering what the F designation means. That means that it has no included graphics. Fine for us, because we're going to be using a dedicated GPU, of course, in any gaming build we put together. You might also notice the use of a letter K on an Intel chip, or an X on a Ryzen chip, that means it's overclockable. So if you had an Intel 12100KF, it would be overclockable with no graphics. 12100K would be overclockable with graphics. So if you've ever wondered what the confusing letters are about, that's what that is. This is going to be a perfect combo for an RTX 3050. Also going to work okay with a 3060, 6600 XT, or AMD's new 6500 XT. A card that for other reasons you probably shouldn't buy, but for a rough indication of the level, 
that's where we sit in. This motherboard is a little bit on the pricey side for the combo, and at this price range, you'll often spend more on your motherboard than your CPU, if not about the same level. This has PCIe Gen 4 included though. In fact, it has two slots, allowing you to add in the latest super fast SSDs. Older PCIe Gen 3 drives top out at about three gigabytes a second. Gen 4 goes to seven gigabytes a second. It's great to have the option, especially if you're only spending another $10. Other pros include four RAM DIMM slots for dual channel memory and lots of upgrades. Try and avoid two DIMM boards if at all possible. And you also get a solid IO that includes the latest USB 3.1 Gen 2. The only major downside is you've got no USB-C on the rear panel and you also have no Wi-Fi included on this board. Otherwise, it's a great board and we've done a full review over on geekawatt.com. I think Intel are currently the best option for budget gamers given how strong the i3-12100F is, but AMD also have options in some of their older generation Ryzen 5 chips or their current Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X. Which brings me nicely on to the next combo the MSI B550M Pro VDH and a Ryzen 3 3000 series. As I say, I think Intel is still the better option on a budget, but with a cheaper motherboard, this will cost you less overall. I wouldn't recommend the use of this with an RTX 3060. I would stick to that 3050 TR. But if you're looking to build a cheap 3050 system, this is a good pairing for you. As I say, AMD have got lots of different options on the 5000 series or the 3000 series. And if you're willing to shop just a little bit older, you can get yourself that bit more value for money. And that brings us on next up to our mid-range combo today where you've got so many different options some people define mid-range as like a thousand dollar build some a two thousand dollar system so i'm going to cater for all of those options in our mid-range stack Let's start off with my preferred mid-range choice, the Intel Core i5-12400, and this, the Gigabyte B660 DS3H AX DDR4. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about how some Intel boards support the latest DDR5, and some don't. The good news is that DDR5 has still got a long way to go, and isn't actually going to give you any more than like 5% performance, especially on the mid-range. So save yourself a lot of money, and I mean a lot of money, go for a DDR4 motherboard, and you'll be really happy with that choice. This Gigabyte board's got stacks of room for lots of different expansion cards, four RAM DIMM slots, you also get memory overclocking and a better I.O. than on our Asus board with Wi-Fi, USB-C, USB 3.1 Gen 2. It's literally packed out with features and is an awesome choice. The 12400F is also a great shout. I recommend the F chips a lot, especially if they're cheaper. With Intel's latest performance and efficiency cores, this is a great chip and it makes up for the lack of overclocking support when compared to AMD's Ryzen offerings by the state of its out-of-box performance. But what if overclocking is more your jam? You want to push your CPU to the max and you want to do so with a Team Red processor, such as AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X, my second mid-range choice. As I say, I would prefer the Intel offering right now as these AMD chips are getting somewhat long in the tooth, but pair this up with an MSI B550 Tomahawk motherboard and you're sure not to be disappointed. With six cores, 12 threads, and some really crazy boost clock speeds that go all the way up to 4.6 gigahertz, AMD have killed it on the single-threaded performance here, shaking their previous reputation of being a multi-threaded winner. Don't get me wrong, the CPU is still great with multi-threaded performance, but single-threaded is where AMD often lag behind. Not anymore. I appreciate I'm throwing a lot of numbers your way, so quickly before we move on to the high-end chips, take a look at our easy compatibility guide on your screen now, which shows all of the chipsets of motherboards that support the latest CPUs. For more information, check out our detailed write-up over on geekoart.com, linked in the cards now and in the description below. But James, you're getting me all excited. We've had a great range of CPUs for budget and mid-range, but what are the best motherboard and processor combos on the high end? Well, here, my friends, I'm afraid to say Intel take the crown on both counts. Let me explain. If you're looking for a more value-conscious high-end option, one that gets you great performance for a bit more cash, but definitely doesn't waste anything, check out this Asus Prime Z690P D4 and an Intel Core i7-12700F. 
This is a basic motherboard, but it still gives you CPU and RAM overclocking, integrated Wi-Fi, USB 3, USB-C, USB 3.1 Gen 2, and crucially supports the cheaper DDR4 memory. If you're looking to get a high-end combo, it doesn't get much better than this if you want i7 performance at sort of i5 prices really, when you consider how much these two items can commonly be picked up for. The i7-12700K is a great chip, the KF is also worth considering, and Intel have really smashed it out the park with 12th gen. I think we went months and months last year without doing a single Intel build and now pretty much everyone is Intel. We're by no means Intel fanboys, they're just killing it at the moment and we're really excited for what AMD will respond with. That's not to suggest you should wait for their release before buying as these 12th gen chips are such a great marker but whatever AMD deliver is going to have to be bloody good. For single and multi-threaded performance, this is a great combo. Video editing, rendering, gaming, the latest titles, it ticks every box and has plenty of features that you're gonna need for the next few years or so. To round things off, we're gonna cover off the best combo for those of you with more money than sense, quite literally. And for this one, we're gonna give you a choice. The CPU is gonna stay the same, Intel's 12900K, or even their new KS, which is a ludicrously expensive binned chip. They basically take the best of the 12900Ks and give them them to you. The 12900K itself though is still a crazy CPU, it's the best processor we've ever had in the office, it beats out the 5950X from AMD, it beats out even some of the Threadripper options from last gen, it is crazy. When we first ran Cinebench actually, we re-ran it because we didn't believe the score could be that good from Intel's new CPUs. But with a CPU this high end, you really really need a good motherboard to pair it with. Not only to make sure it's got enough power, as your board will deal with all the main power consumption, and not only to make sure you can give it a good bit of overclocking, but also to give you the features you're after. And we were really tied, we couldn't... Oh, well there's the rising gone. Here we really couldn't decide which was the best choice. Asus's ROG Z690 Maximus, which is actually slightly cheaper. <laughs> I think it's still like a four, five hundred dollar motherboard. And this, the Aorus Z690 Master from Gigabyte. The one on the right has 10 gigabit ethernet, which is a real, real pull for us. But the one on the left still has a superb IO. They both have stacks of CPU overclocking room. They both have loads of support for DDR5 memory. They both have PCI Gen 5. They both support Windows 11. They both have plenty of Gen 4 NVMe slots. They're just both great motherboards. And we'll link these alongside all of the other parts that have filled the table in the description below. If you're looking for some great GPUs to pair up with your new CPU and motherboard combos, check out some recent relevant content. Thanks for tuning in though and as always we'll see you in the next one.